Greetings, this is I, Tatis Magical, your lord and emperor here of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome once more to the world of darkness. Are you ready to dive in the tabletop world? Today, we're going to be going over another kit game from Changeling the Dreaming, which I will have to preface, there's a deep dive into the versions of Kith and Kith game that I did as part of this that I was actually unaware of and learned about. But regardless, if you're joining me, of course, you feel we're live on Twitch or later on on YouTube. I'm just trying to knock down the phone. <sighs> Hand movements. Fast. Rapid. <laughs> or you can be joining me on YouTube. Hey, YouTube people, please appease the dark algorithm and, you know, like, subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment. Have any of you played today's topic or dealt with them, which I'm curious if you have, Clarichon? Because we're going to be talking about and diving into a little bit about that here, and I should get started with the big preference here, because this is my technically second, canonically, time-wise video on the different Kith Kane of Changeling. And under the Kith Kane, there are Kith, which are clans and tribes. And Kith can be from a lot of different places, but there's also other different things, and it's a mess. Kith Kane, Kith... Yes. Kith Kane would be the word that I've been kind of using are the main characters of the changing game, where you're going to play them. So if we talk about Kith Kane, we're talking about them. Kith are just basically groups of supernatural cultures in general. It's the Kith Kane, our type of Kith. The Kith Kane are the changelings of Europe, mostly, and their cultural sphere of influence. That's most well known. But there are Kith from around the world, which we will eventually talk about. All right, now we've, we've established the basis. Now we have to do step two in this entire list. Galen. Galen are outsiders among changelings. That's basically what the term means. Some may be Kith Kane, or some uh, might have origins or areas outside of that. So Galen are still Kith, but some might be Kith Kane, and the point of why we talk about the Galen a little separately is that they sometimes deal with Kith, with Kith Kane. They're still all Kith. Alright, you got that? It's confusing as all heck, and I hope you got that. Ch uh, Cl Clurichon, which we're going to be talking about today, are simply called Galane because they're very rare. And your average Kith Kane is unfamiliar with their ways. So that's why at very least Clurichan and a few others are like that. Other Galanes for other reasons, but they're from different areas, but still deal with the group we know of Europeans. Some of them don't, and then they're not really... Ga it's it's a mess, but we're going to try to go over as many of these as possible. I have, like, five lists, at very least, and they're all beings you can either play or deal with in the course of your adventures and changelings. So, heck, we'll go through them all. And I'm going through the Kith of Europe to begin with, which includes both the Galade and Kith Cave. So. Clarichans! Now, now I've introduced you to where the hell they come from and why you may not have heard about a Clarichan when you're looking at your Change to the Dreaming book. Well, there's a good reason for it. They aren't a traditional being you would play. Doesn't mean you couldn't, but they're not traditional. What book would I look to to learn all about them and all their stats? Well, there is a great one. I can show off right here. Immortal Eyes, Courts, Court of the Kings. This book here gives us honestly like four pages of information on these guys. It's four pages. It's enough that you get a general idea and probably have the option of like, oh, maybe I want to play one of these. You know, you have an idea how to. And probably, you know, it gives you some stuff. It's a source book and chronicle from Change of the Dream. And this goes back to uh, second edition. Uh, I think second edition? 
from 96, so $9 for the PDF if you want to get this, and play a, a uh, clerk check. That's probably the best thing. Okay. Let's actually talk about these beings now that we've kind of established, where to look up about them from, where to get further information, where to get stats for possibly playing them. I haven't checked the book, so I'm not 100% sure on that one. Uh, but, you know, I assume it probably give you a little bit of an introduction. Who are the clerks are? <clears throat> Who I might be... Okay, so Chlor... Uch, con, Chloracon. Chloracon. Thank you. Um, I missed that uh, I had information on how to pronounce their name. Chloracon. The Chloracon are Galane. So again, that's their outsiders to your general Kith Kane society. Still Kiths, but they're native to Ireland. They can be found anywhere that Irish immigrants have made their home. They once encouraged dreamers to associate them with leprechauns, which they now regret. So Chloracon are basically connected with leprechauns in a way. If they kind of made it that way. So a popular myth says leprechauns are, you know, your shout, small round belly, make shoes to noble fairies, hide their pots of gold. And they are one of the most well-known fairies in existence. They're recognized as, you know, the little green bearded man in, in um, little bearded man in green, buckled shoes, curved pipe, jug of whiskey, shamrocks. It's very Ireland and Irish. Chlorachon, Chloracon uh, aren't like this at all. But they fostered that image in mortal heads, and it's connected to them ever since. They are Galen, but they personally feel that they're just one more type of the commoner types of Kithkane. They're like, yeah, we're rare, there's not a lot of us, but we're, we're Kithkane, you guys. And they're like, no, no, you're Galen. We're one of you, we're just another commoner. In Ireland, they do have large numbers, and a few have made the transitions to areas where Irish immigrants are plentiful. The Kith Kane of Boston, Chicago, Toronto, Melbourne actually will not realize that they have Khorakan along with them. But again, maybe they're not looking deep enough and trying to find out that. They're an endearing Kith that expel at revelry while holding their own when given responsibilities. They have a good time and they love a good time and work hard to make sure everybody enjoys themselves. Puka have nothing on a chlor I keep butchering it. Chloricon. Chloricon, Chloricon, Chloricon. In the joke department, though Chloricon jokes tend to be less bitter and manic than a Puka's. They also have a talent for fitting in and smoothing things over. They always seem to be aware of changing currents at any time in a social situation, and Seely among them use these insights to say and do the right thing at the right time. They are very responsive to the needs of the moment, and can be trusted to live up to the responsibilities and duties placed on them. Not that they don't annoy other Kith Kane sometimes. Those who are unseely use their talents to do the exact opposite of what's indicated. When silence is called for, they delight in being loud and obnoxious. If a few stern words might stop, uh, serve to stop a party that's got out of hand, they pour oil onto the fire, becoming wilder than the most outrageous party-goer. Above all, that goes right out the mi all of this goes out the window whenever they imbibe alcohol. Any kind of alcoholic beverage. Once they start, they cannot quit. They draw further and further into the selves, brooding about all the cares of the world. An unseely Thurakan will become maldon, teary-eyed, sloppy. They get passionately sentimental about what they had for breakfast in the morning. Holding it up as they've never to be found again. This was the best breakfast I had. It's the I will never get this breakfast again. Unseely just get me. Anyone who gets in their way when they had in this state better be able to move or they're going to stomp them flat when the Chlor Chlorachan tears them a new one. Well, you know. This is why many Kith Kane view them with suspicion and a little uh, aggravation. No doubt a Chlorachan, uh, uh, Chloracon, 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 I keep saying it incorrectly. I've got to get it right in my brain. 
becomes so proficient at disappearing in the twinkling of an eye in response. They're good at running away, too. <sighs> All right. So they do think of, like, think of themselves as jack-of-all-trades. That's one of those things that they believe themselves. But they are also adept at mu being music musicians. They are widely acknowledged as preeminent bards. And even the most least talented, Cora Khan, uh, can pick up an instrument and produce a few, few chords or pick up a simple tune. They're insatiable when it comes to music, dance, tales, soaking them up and adding them to the repertoire uh, of anything new. A new dance step, a new phrase, a new joke, a music tale, a musical passage. They harken back to their Celtic roots in a lot of way and have prodigious memories and often act as traveling bards. Beginning, Clerk Ch uh, Khan, Khan can't assign more than three to any ability other than performance. So that's a game term of this, being a jack of all trades, master of none. Yes, even with freebie points, you're playing a Chloricon. Other than performance, you have twos in everything. <clears throat> they have an eclectic outlook. They find it hard to approve an ability without getting bored or moving on to something else. That's what makes them excellent <clears throat> bards. They know a little bit about everything. They bring the same intensity to their love of collecting. Sometime between being a childing and a wilder, Clorachan uh, will become fascinated with one particular thing. It could be matchsticks models, shiny rocks, handwritten poems, uh, recordings of a traditional group in Ireland, pictures of clouds, muffin pans, Hollywood scripts, whatever it is, could be anything. They just become obsessed with something to collect it. Whatever attracts them becomes a lifelong fascination and an object for collecting. And pity the poor Florchan who doesn't realize their fairy nature before they're a grump. All that time that they could have been collecting, lost. So much that they have to make up for. Now, they don't go to suicidal lengths or betray their friends most of the time to obtain marvelous examples of their collectible. They will do almost anything else to get it. Basically, the legends of Chlorachan... Chlor... Chlor... Hmm, God. <laughs> Chlor... Chloracon. Hoarding gold came from this practice. It does account for letting... For their paranoia. For about letting just anyone view their collection, though. No, 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 no. It's mine. You have to have the, you know, be trustworthy enough that you're not going to mess around with anything. Not I, I'm on to you. So, what do they appear as? Clerkon rarely grow above five foot five. Their bodies are compact, muscular, giving the impression that they are stocky and solid. Their features are almost always good natured, generally uh, change greatly depending on their semen. The ears are pointed, but smaller than less notable than those of Sidae. They usually have red or tawny-colored hair, green or blue eyes that slant slightly upward at the outer edges. Now, in modern times, because their connection with Irish and Irish blood can spread to a lot of places, you do have Plurichon who have emerged in darker-skinned families, especially in America, those that have may be of more African descent. These people still are Plurichon, and they will have reddish tints to their hair and then hazel or light brown eyes. But, so yeah. Again, hey. America's a mixing pot. We're getting Clorachan of, you know, more than just Irish ethnicity at this point in time. Well, they might be have some Irish blood in them. At very least, they're connected with the Irish community. Changeling stuff. Um, <laughs> changeling stuff. So, again, they're not wearing the green jackets, knee pads, hats of a century ago, the, you know, the leprechaun look. Clorachan... <coughs> Again, I'm butchering their name every goddamn time. Chloricon, nowadays. A Chlorachon, nowadays, favors green, gray, brown, earthy colors. Basically, allows them to disappear into the natural surroundings. And technically, normal clothes. 
yeah, they're just going to wear something normal, average, just they like certain colors, earthy colors. If they're a craft person in, in a lot of their work, they will wear just sturdy work clothes and craft aprons. One that particularly goes to being a musician prefers jeans, a t-shirt, maybe a leather jacket. When they go to court, though, they will usually wear chimerical clothing that is vaguely medieval looking, so they blend into the crowd. Again, it's the idea that they also blend in a little bit, so you might not know one of your fellows at court is a lurch on. You know, it, it's they, they hide in place like Chloricon. 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 So if Chan is Khan. Chloricon. <laughs> One thing is, though, they will always have a little bit of green in their attire. A ribbon, a belt, a cloak, a coat, a hat, a green stone set to a ring. Only Chloricon know why. But others do theorize they are accepted some sort of chaos long ago that demands the wearing of the green. Clays and Korachan prefer gold jewelry, such as torques, heavy rings, and Celtic style cloak. Alright. So. Chloricon can be found traveling and playing, singing, storytelling, members of uh, repertory companies, making the craft show circuit, tinkerers, what we call themselves travelers, not tinkerers, by the way, tinkerer, tinkerers, who call themselves travelers, not tinkerers, by the way. Some prefer a more settled life. I know they're in craft shops or pubs. A very few accept posts as court bards. Whether they are travelers or sed sedentary, all Chlor <laughs> Chloricon have some place they call their own where they store their collection. Only the most trusted friends are invited to their homes since they often spent their lives accumulating just the right collectibles and have the and have a horror of seeing them gnawed by a hungry red cap or used as juggling balls by Puka. So it's like, yeah, <clears throat> only the correct people get to see the collection. Only the correct people. Otherwise, no, screw that. You're not seeing that. They're seemings. Childlings are cute. Chubby red cheeks, twinkling bright eyes. Their ready smiles win the hearts easily. They usually take great interest in several crafts or creative skills, such as pottery, of making, sewing, singing. The voices are bell clear and always singing too. For wilders, they're slightly older versions of the childling, except all their cheeks are not so rosy or chubby. Their faces, while still somewhat broad, have matured in rashes. Their eyes are very bright. Many have started their collections and will add to them throughout their lifetimes. Most at this point in time have mastered at least one instrument by this time, and whether they're aware of their fairy nature or not. <clears throat> Grumps are like most of the popular conception of leprechauns. They have faces that look like dried apples, all wrinkles and creases, most of them lap lines. Their bright eyes have lost their uh, are lost in folds of skin as their eyebrows become bushy, even the woman's. Males often grow beards. As grumps settle into their roles as elders, they focus more on their collection and accumulating treasures they lovingly display in their homes. Grumps are honored among uh, Chloricon as repositories of ancient songs. <clears throat> now for the powers, their birthrights, their affinities actor, and they have twinkling of eye and insight, and their frailties tri uh, tippling, which is, of course, related to alcohol. And these are mechanically abilities and things, so I'm not going to go to details of them, but you can always check them out in the books. Or find them online. The but yes, so... Be careful when you drink. And, uh... A little bit of a twinkle in your eye and a little bit of insight to this. But that is, of course, the... Lorcon. Lorcon. Keep trying to say their name wrong, even though I got the pronunciation. I want to say it differently, and I know it's wrong. Lorcon. Interestingly enough, we don't have that deep narrative history that we got kind of when I talked about the previous video, but for good reason, yeah, we don't really need to talk about that, and they're just a simple kith descended from Ireland, and they are honestly the source of the idea of a leprechaun, and related to them, unfortunately, for themselves. It's sort of like the idea that they liked creating this image in the public eye of this type of fae because it got away from them, but it got out of hand. You know, it's sort of like a little bit of a joke. It's like, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we look like. We're totally like that. 
Yeah, no, that's rude. Leprechauns. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Oh, crap. It just got out of hand. Kind of to a ridiculous degree. <clears throat> but the Chloricon also, though, you know, we can see how they're related to the myth of that. We can also see how they are an interesting small group of kith. Yeah, they are technically kith king. At least they believe themselves to be, even though they're not really necessarily connect, uh, considered that. And they do have deep connections with many of the kith king courts and stuff like that. And certainly could connect with them. Boston, Chicago, Toronto, Melbourne. I mentioned those cities for a good reason. They had a lot of Irish immigrants. And so they have Clarkon in those places. Now, again, they are on the rarer side. It's another reason why they were considered Gallic. They are outsiders to a degree because unless you're talking about the courts in Ireland, yeah, there might not be many of them, and people might not notice them. People might not be connecting with them in the courts. But they're there. A little bit of uh, mythology switched around in the modern day, interestingly enough. And uh, certainly speaking, yeah. They are a interesting one to be interested in finding. You know, people might not recognize who or what you are in a normal Kith Kane group. Though technically speaking, you know, you consider yourself one of them. They're like, hey, I'm not just some random Kith. I'm from Europe. I'm a Kith King. I deal with courts. Yeah, 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 we're centered out of Ireland. Yeah, 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 most of us aren't in other places. Yeah, 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 there's not a lot of us here in the, you know, U.S., Canada, Australia, other places Irish people went to. But we're there. We're one of you. So. There'll be plenty more interesting kith I will talk about as we go on. Because there's those that are from other continents, other countries, other places outside the kith king court. <clears throat> that certainly with the European influence and came traveling a lot because of that, yeah, you might connect up or meet some of these kids from these other places. Or be able to play them. It's a global world out there. And our core kit game are the only ones you can play. We'll get into all of them eventually. <clears throat> It'll be a fun for you. But that'll be it for today's video and part of the stream if you're going to be live. We're going to be Moving on to some other stuff live, but for those of you that have been joining me on YouTube, thank you very much. Please remember to come check me out live if you can. If not, just keep watching the stuff up on YouTube. My schedule for doing all this tabletop stuff is Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and back in the day, early to mid-afternoon. Friday is my World of Darkness day when I do those topics. I also have a live play of Pathfinder First Edition on Wednesdays at 9 p.m., Crimson Queen. <clears throat> that's my current TTRPG that's live. And on Saturdays, I have Discussing Tabletop, where we talk a little bit of news of the week, and then dive into deeper discussion topics where we help you guys out and your, make your role-playing games better. You know, giving advice and ideas of how you can understand some things, both on the player and GMs. I do have social media link down below, and that's about it. Everybody out there, I hope you had an enjoyable time. And those of you on YouTube, and joining me later on, I bid all of you a deep and wonderful Farewell.